As we start editing our projects, I want to go through some quick workflow reminders. So I'm here in Premiere, and the first thing I need to do is bring in my footage. So I'm going to pull up my folder. I'm going to um, find my footage here, and I'm just going to drag my entire footage folder in. It's got uh, different days when I shot B-roll. It's got interviews. It's got some stock footage, and I'm just going to pull that whole folder in here. and there's a lot of it, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so now all of my footage is in my project window. Remember, I like to view this as a list because then I can just um, drill down into these different folders and get all of my footage in one place. If you want to view this as uh, thumbnails, you can hit this icon view button down here, and it's going to bring up icons. If you double click into a folder, it's going to make a whole new window you can click and drag on the name of the window. So that's this right here. Click and drag on that. And then when that purple box shows up, you can drop it in there. And now you have this bin of your footage. Now, if I want to go into a specific folder of footage, I have to do the same thing. This is part of the reason why I like to view the list view, because then I can just easily navigate through different folders of footage. Here, if you want to navigate between, let's say, that bin this folder here of footage, which, which is called a bin, and another bin, you just have to keep clicking back and forth between these. If you don't see one uh, that you've opened up up here, it's probably because there's not enough room to fit the bin title up there. So just hit these double arrows, and you can find all of your different uh, bins in there. I'm going to go back to my list view because I like that better. It just keeps me more organized, but that's a that's a personal preference. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start pulling out my useful clips from my interviews. I'm gonna drill down into my interviews folder. I'm going to double click on an interview to bring it up into my source monitor. You can do that with any piece of footage, any piece of music. And uh, I'm just gonna start pulling out the useful clips from this interview. So in terms of, when we, when we talk about, so, in terms of when we and I'm just going to the point where I know I want to start this clip I'm using my arrow keys I'm using spacebar to play forward I'm using L to play forward faster etc and I'm just going to hit I on the keyboard you could also press this button here to mark an endpoint when we talk about history it's oftentimes told from the perspective of those who are victorious or those who in a sense won it's never it's not, it's not often told from the, from the perspective of those who didn't come out ahead after the battle and that sort of thing. So I know that that's one clip I'm going to want to use, so I'm going to hit O to set an out point, and now I've just cut this little part of this massive uh, video file down, and I can do two things. I don't have any sequences here yet, so I can just click and drag on this clip and drop it here to create a new sequence, or I could right click on the clip name in my project window and say new sequence from clip and that's going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this sequence um, because I don't want it to just be called the name of my uh, my footage clip. I'm going to say seq dash interview prep and that's just going to help keep me organized. Next thing I'm going to do is um, go in and make a new folder, a new bin. I'm going to call this sequences because I want to keep those separated out from my footage and I'm going to drag this sequence into my sequences bin. So now I can always find that. So I'm going to keep doing that until I finish pulling out all of my useful interview clips from all of my interviews, uh, but I'll go ahead and jump into a project where I've already done this and I'll show you what I mean. Go into my sequences folder, we'll find my interview uh, prep sequence, and you can see that I have my three interview subjects separated by uh, color label so that I can easily find who is who when I'm creating my project. So there's two ways that you can label footage. You can either label your individual clips in your timeline by right clicking and saying label and then choose a color. Or what I like to do is go into my footage folder before I start cutting up my interviews and uh, say okay all of these clips that are coming from Miss Ewing are going to be this color green. So I just right click here and do the same thing, label in green. And then every clip that I pull down is going to be that green color. Same thing for, you know, for Justin, I wanted this kind of, uh, what color does Premiere say that is? That teal color. And every time I pull down a clip of Justin's, it's going to be that teal color. So I can easily see in my timeline who these clips are coming from. So this is my interview prep sequence. 
and uh, I did the same thing with my B-roll. I pulled out all of my useful B-roll, so I'm gonna go into my sequences folder again, go into my B-roll sequence. So this looks kind of crazy right now, but I'll show you what I did. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Remember, there's a couple of ways to zoom in. I can pull on the end of this line and it's gonna zoom in on my clip so I can see them more easily. Or I can use my zoom tool, hit Z on the keyboard, click in. And so I color coded all of my clips. These are B-roll shots from different days. This is a classroom day. This is uh, the first BitLab day. We have uh, another BitLab day here and so on. And, and so I'm just trying to separate out into the different parts of the process and I'm choosing colors that make sense to me to do that. I have everything that I pulled down. This is all of my useful B-roll. And then I copy and pasted it by um, just Control C, selecting it all, and then Control C. And then I pasted it here, and it used to go all the way to the end, but then um, I deleted each of the clips as I used them so I wouldn't run the risk of using them again without realizing it. So that's how I like to make sure that I always have a record of what I thought was good B-roll, but also have a record of what I've used. So I'm gonna show you my cut one now. And um, let's just go ahead and get rid of these adjustment layers. We don't need these. We've got some graphics in there. For your rough cut, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want you to get your footage in order so that you've got um, your interview clips are telling a story that has a beginning, middle, and end. And uh, you're laying out a thesis in that first part if you're doing a documentary. And in the middle part, you're kind of getting into the nuts and bolts of what your topic is all about. And then in the end, we are leaving the viewer feeling satisfied that the questions and the thesis that you presented at the beginning of the film have been resolved. Um, and if you're doing a PSA package where everything is scripted, it's a little bit more straightforward because you've already come up with your narrative, right? And you are going to just kind of follow your script as you edit and put all of your useful clips in. So what we have here is in video track one and audio track one, we have my A-roll video and my A-roll audio. This is my interview audio and video that makes up the narrative of my story. In video track two, I have my B-roll. And you can see that B-roll covers up almost the entire project. I have a clip here so that we can show Cree, um, so that we can put a nameplate up here so people know who she is. Same thing with um, Justin, we'll do the same thing there, put a nameplate uh, what's called a lower third to show who he is uh, and same thing with Miss Ewing. So other than those three spots though everything is covered up with b-roll and that's because it's way more interesting to watch the process happen than to just look at somebody talking about the process happening. I have my music in audio track 2 and in audio track 3 I have um, my audio from my b-roll footage and you can see that i have this channel muted i didn't end up wanting to use most of the audio for my b-roll i thought it distracted from the story but audio track four i did pull down some of the clips that i did want to use uh, for my audio so you can see that i just pulled them down into a track that's not muted and then over here this is just my bumper for bolus that we put at the end of every video and, and i wanted to have the audio uh, available for that too because um, there's a few sound effects so um, that is the structure of my project and this is what i would consider a rough cut so i have my narrative in line i've got my b-roll laid out there's a lot left to do i want to do some color correction i want to get creative with uh, some of the effects and graphics that i use but for now i just have my footage laid out this is the same process for a psa package if you're doing something scripted you just have it a little bit easier you don't need to do that b-roll prep you don't need to do that interview prep you can just start in a sequence cut one uh, or you can call it sequence rough cut whatever makes sense to you and you'll lay out your footage um, in the order that you uh, originally scripted or you might find that another order works better your challenge that uh, the many documentary projects aren't going to have to deal with is you're probably going to lay it out there and see that your 30 second PSA is actually like 50 some seconds to start with and then you're going to have to really go through and get creative about what you're going to cut what's necessary how can we make this more interesting by uh, switching up the camera angles that we're showing because hopefully you shot multiple takes of each scene with different camera angles um, and so that's going to take a lot of time just kind of fine-tuning and making this really impactful because you have such a short amount of time in a 30 second or a 60 second PSA to make an impact on your audience one other reminder 
your music you can find on Unit 5 production uh, of the Haiku page. And you can go over to the Resources tab. This licensed music link will take you to a Google Drive folder. And then we have short tracks and full tracks. So short tracks are like 30 seconds, 60 seconds long, and they're, they're already cut down for you. So you might want to use those, especially if you're doing a, uh, a PSA where you know you're going to need those links. And full tracks are you know anywhere from a minute long to four minutes long or something like that. So you can download all of these. Make sure that you extract them because, as you know, with Google Drive, when you download a folder, it's going to zip it up. You need to extract all the files from that folder. I would put them into uh, alongside your footage in your project folder. Create a new folder called Music, and uh, and then you can have all of your music there. Same thing. Pull that into Premiere, and then uh, into your project window. You can see I have my Premium Beat full tracks here. And just like with any piece of footage, you can double click on it. It'll bring up in your source monitor. You can listen to it, decide if it's right for your project, and then pull it down into your sequence. So that was a basic overview of what I want your rough cuts to look like and what your workflow should be like. If you want more specific instruction about Premiere, I recommend going back to some of our previous tutorials. And if there's something that I don't go over in, in my videos, I guarantee you there's a great resource out there somewhere on the web. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, but I want you to look around a little bit online before you ask me to see if you can find the solution yourself. So that's it for now. And let me know, as always, if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.